Hi guys, what's up? So I'm going to try and make a video about the OTC X1. First of all, let's uh, say you can place a comment on this video, but make sure it's uh, you know sympathetic and nice, so we don't have to fight about something. If you don't like it, just go. So uh, for this video, I'd like to go do my laptop, and uh, we can talk about the stuff we're seeing on there. Wait, let's do it the right way around. So this is a video I have uh, commented on at some point and uh, the comment has been removed. So what I thought is that this uh, kind of like system with the two wheels spinning in uh, the same direction and then the other wheel, uh, you know, these, these wheels spinning all together making the wheels go up and such uh, it really looked like uh, what Ralph Ring was talking about and recently I've also been watching this other video from uh, Search for Truth Reality uh, including Ralph Ring and Marsha Ring and they're talking about this uh, circular foil craft again and I was really inspired to do another video about it so they're basically talking about this thing right here. It's a very extensive overview of uh, what the circular foil craft would look like and uh, not exactly how it works. Uh, so they leave us guessing. So that's basically what we're gonna do. And uh, you know, what I thought is that what you can see is that uh, uh, so it's supposed to spin around in a circle like this and then uh, these things they also have bearings so they're they're called neutrons they're also s supposed to spin and um, from what I have seen earlier and you can see it on the next page oh wait this is actually an a, a, a attempt of somebody trying to buy a, a build it <coughs> it's very interesting and let's go further with it. Oh, there's some more people trying to attempt to build it, but you can see that the build quality is not very, very great, but still they're trying and that's, that's really great. It's inspiring. And then there's this guy who uh, also tried to build uh, at least the mechanism of the U-trons. And I must say, I'm also inspired by this. I uh, also tried to, uh, you know, make it. You can see here I wound one of these coils and um, in this kind of uh, U-tron shape, so like round and square at the same time. Uh, but for what I can tell, this doesn't do what I think it should do. And what you can see on the other build is that it's all made by uh, aluminum, and uh, so. What you can see here, the, the windings, they're going in this way. Well, actually it should have been this way so that the lines can be cut so that it can be made to, uh, you know, rotate along its axis. So why is it so important to rotate this thing? Let's see if uh, there is more videos here. Uh, there's also one of these guys who tried to make this U-tron uh, and he actually has the commutator part here as you can see on the right here it says commutator whoa oops and also it says uh, generator so that made him think yeah well let's make a commutator generator <coughs> and um, he's talking about his meter we didn't hook it up so I guess he didn't really succeed in this so now let's go into my idea about why it should be uh, spinning at the first place. Well, you can see here there is this John Searle uh, generator, which also claims to be uh, able to, uh, you know, lift off uh, and create its own gravity. So you have a rotation that goes around a uh, in a circle, and then there's these small spinners that also rotate. So if you look a little bit further into this, um, and actually what this guy is insinuating right here, so you have these spinning things here and also an axis here 
that that is allowed to rotate on and uh, these things act like gyroscopes so they when they are spun in in uh, this direction these gyroscopes actually try to move upwards um, which is probably also, me also meant to have be happening here and it's probably also uh, you know meant to be happening in in this configuration as well so these uh, will have some sort of force going up like that then there is this uh, explanation from Veritasium that also says that uh, you know when when the gyroscope is spinning and then when you turn it in the <clears throat> preceding way then it will also move up you can see it in this video a little bit so this guy will soon try to spin it you can see that it's going up so that proves that point It's, it's almost like uh, you know a magnetic field so you have a spinning field here and then the the gyroscope that's trying to move up uh, you know it's showing this lines in this way but actually we're talking about it in this way so that would mean the current would go in the other direction it would go magnetically inside uh, and in the other direction as it's being drawn so <clears throat> let's go back to this one you see here that the neutrons are uh, actually they're, they're, they they have the text generator there so that made me think okay you have a what's shown here a aluminum neutron kind of thing and it's inside a c-clamp coil so this must mean something going on with uh, something like this. And this is a Faraday disk generator and it probably is something like that. <clears throat> so then I also saw a video and I can't find it about uh, these neutron coils uh, pulsing on and off above this uh, capacitor plate and uh, that would move the rotor so here we have a way to move the rotor this direction and then um, from what I know is that when you have these u-shaped coils they can hold certain magnetism so like remnants they don't lose all of the magnetism um, all at once so then when the motor action is done it will go past the utron and that could possibly make it spin as well and then so when it has the spin we come back to this slide then because we have spin we can now generate the power from it this is just an idea I don't know if it's true but you know I'm trying to think about how it would work so about remnant magnetism I've also looked up another video here you have Russ Grease from RWD Research um, and he shows that uh, C-clamp coils in combination with one of those bars they can hold the, the magnetism inside for a very long time he claims here that it held the magnetism for two years and then he pulls away this bar and the electricity is generated so in uh, this OTC X1 case we don't have this bar so there's no bar to pull away so there's no way to generate that electricity from the magnetism that was remnant but then again uh, an aluminum sort of uh, generator thing comes along and will reflect that magnetism and all of a sudden we can now generate from that um, magnetism that was remnant so here's another ID. I don't know it's true, but you know, why not think about something cool? <laughs> and then lastly, uh, they claim to, uh, they say that, that you know, uh, geometry is really important. Well, this is obvious. 
<laughs> here you can see uh, one of those things from the playground and it's much like uh, a lever and you know wouldn't you want to uh, pull the lever right here instead of here this would be really heavy and uh, when you do it here it's quite lighter so it's very logical to have the right geometry so these were my thoughts about the uh, ODC X1 um, currently I'm not really in the position to uh, to make any of this stuff so I thought why not just talk about it and uh, you know it also clears my head maybe it's also possible for you to have comments on it and uh, that would be very nice so thanks for watching see you later